Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's use the technique that we learned in the previous two videos. Let's apply it to polar equations. So what we have here is we have the relationship where the position away from the origin, r, is going to be a function of theta in such a way that x equals r times the cosine of theta and y equals r times the sine of theta, the general equations describing polar form of the equation. And then if we realize that r is simply a function of theta, we can then say that x is a function of theta times the cosine of theta and y is a function of theta times the sine of theta. Once we have that, we can now take the derivative of x with respect to theta and the derivative of y with respect to theta. When we do that, we, of course, we have to use the product rule because we have f of theta times a cosine and f of theta times a sine. So when we use the product rule, this is the derivative of x with respect to theta and the derivative of y with respect to theta. Now, the next thing we're going to do, because we kind of look forward, is realizing that the length of a segment of a polar curve is going to be equal to the integral of the square root of the dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared d theta. So what we need to do is figure out what this is equal to. And since we have a definition for dx d theta and dy d theta, all we have to do is, is square both of them and then add them together. So here we have the quantity dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. So what we do is we take this quantity right here and square it, which is this right here, and then we take this quantity, square it, which is this right here. Notice, this is the first term squared, this is the last term squared, and this is twice the product of the two terms, that's for dx d theta. And then for dy d theta, this is the first term squared, the last term squared, plus twice the product of the two. Now notice, when you add these two together, these are identical, except one is negative, one is positive, so when we add them together, they cancel out. And here, when you add these two together, notice we have f, th f theta squared times the sine square of theta, f theta squared times the cosine square of theta. When you add them together, and you factor out an f theta squared, then it's f theta squared times the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta, which is equal to 1, which means you only are left with the f theta squared. The same over here, this is multiplied times the cosine square of theta, this is multiplied times the sine square of theta. When you add them together, sine plus the cosine, the sine square plus the cosine square goes to 1, and you just end up with f prime of theta. In other words, dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared is equal to f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared, which means that with polar curves, to find the length of a polar curve, it's equal to the integral from a to b, the length of the curve, times of, of the, it's the integral of the square root of f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared d theta. So all you have to do is know what your function is. r is a function of theta, whatever it may be. Square it, then find the derivative of the function, square it, add them together underneath the radical times d theta, integrate, and you have the length of the curve. Now, that's as simple as it is. It's a very straightforward equation. Now, let's show you some examples of how to actually apply this.